Hello and welcome to the Answers Overview video. Let's explore how InfoWeb Chatbot Building Platform, Answers, can help you and your business. Building your chatbot on the Answers platform can unlock some great use cases in customer support, automation, sales, marketing, engagement, entertainment, and data collection. And that's just scratching the surface, because Answers also lets you create advanced virtual assistants. But for starters, let's see what you need to set up a virtual assistant like the one you can see on my screen. Building, testing and deploying a chatbot can sound complex, but Answers makes it simple and easy. And it all starts from this canvas. To open it, click on the Create a new chatbot button or edit an existing one. Canvas is this blank chatbot building site on which you can build from scratch or Save time by choosing one of the many pre-made chatbot templates, which you can then modify to fit your needs. In this video, we'll be referring to a template called Customer Service, pre-built on the WhatsApp channel. But don't let that limit your imagination. There are many other channels that you can successfully host your chatbot, such as Live Chat, Facebook Messenger, Viber and others. I'll use this chatbot to introduce some basic terms of the chatbot building world and don't worry about memorizing them, because all the terms and functionalities needed for the chatbot creation are represented by the panels right here. The more functionalities you use, the more complex of a chatbot you can build. In other words, if you want to create a more advanced version of a chatbot, you'll be using all of these panels. The first panel that I'll cover is Dialogues. No matter how intelligent a chatbot is, it always follows a specific set of rules and actions defined by you, the chatbot designer. These rules, actions and the conversation flow are set in this panel. From here, you just need to drag and drop the elements on the canvas to set up the conversation structure. On the right side of the dashboard is the building sidebar. It contains all the available building blocks for the dialogue structure divided into four sections. Chatbot sends, chatbot receives, chatbot actions and chatbot integrations. When you drag over an element from the sidebar to the canvas and then click on it, the sidebar changes to reveal details of the set element and here is where you can complete its configuration. Now we're moving on to the next panel, Intents, a panel that's crucial in building a real AI assistant that can recognize the goal behind the user's input. On this panel, you can see all the intents created for this chatbot with an option to create or import new ones. Let's go ahead and import something. We'll download an example from here and upload it back by simply dragging and dropping the file onto the panel. How all of this works is you create different intents for specific customer queries so that your chatbot can learn to recognize them and, in the end, accurately respond to them. It's pretty much like teaching specific behavior to a person. The more examples you provide, the better they learn to understand what is asked of them. The same goes when it comes to training artificial intelligence systems. If we want our chatbot to recognize the end user intent, there should be ideally 200 to 400 training phrases per each intent. But if you don't have the resources to collect or write down that many phrases, the minimum you can get away with is 10. But I definitely recommend making an effort here. Let me give you an example. If we want to train a chatbot to understand a welcome phrase in English, we'll create at least 50, but ideally 400 phrases to ensure it learns to recognize the intention. That might sound a bit overwhelming until I tell you that we at Infobip can help you get your hands on training phrases for any intent or language. Let's move on to our next panel, attributes. Attributes are like parameters filled with different values, through which you can gain more information about the end user and their potential problems, wishes or queries. It's your chatbot's shorter memory, so to speak. The values related to the end user or the conversation are stored as long as the session is active. On this panel, you can see a list of all the attributes created for one chatbot with an option to add more. In attributes, 
you can store all the end user or conversation information like username, location, email edges and so on and use it for processing or communication such as addressing the end user by name or routing the conversation based on the attribute content. Additionally, if you want to make this short-term memory a long-term one, you can easily do so while collecting attributes in a dialog by storing customer information to our CDP people and use it to personalize any future communication. Now, let's talk about keywords. The words that are absolutely key for the chatbot to recognize how the dialog should unfold. Through keywords, you can configure and branch the dialog depending on the end user's queries or responses. In fact, if you want to quickly build a simple chatbot, you can skip the intent panel completely and simply use keywords to give users options from the menu. In the keywords panel, you can see all the keywords created for a specific chatbot. And once again, you can add more yourself. Each keyword has a list of synonyms covering a range of related words that your customers might write instead of the original, more common keyword. Synonyms matter because they help the chatbot understand and respond correctly to all of these variations of the same user intent. Moving on to the settings panel, which is pretty straightforward. It basically gives you an overview of the chatbot with the possibility to define and configure some general chatbot parameters, such as the chatbot name, description, channel and other similar features. Now that you know your way around panels needed to actually build a chatbot, let's take a look at the simulator panel. This is where your new chatbot comes to life in a controlled environment, so you can make some tweaks before sending it off to the real world. You can test your chatbot to make sure that you've covered as many customer interaction scenarios as possible. Let's quickly summarize what we've covered in this video. The dialog step is an empty canvas where you can create a conversational flow and set up your chatbot structure by simply dragging and dropping the available elements. Inputs received from end users are classified as intents, attributes or keywords and all of them can be reviewed and edited in their dedicated panels. We use intents and keywords to root conversations while attributes represent your chatbot's short-term memory that can take the whole user experience to the next level. Finally, after your chatbot has been active for some time, you will probably want to take a peek under its hood to see how well it is actually doing. That's where the analytics come in. It'll give you insights into your chatbot's performance and a range of statistical data including session analytics, conversational analytics and user analytics. And that sums up the basics of the Answers platform to help get you started on your chatbot building journey. Want more answers? Check out our Answers free trial to better grasp what the platform can do. Because at this point, we've only scratched the surface. Thank you for joining.